God had completed his extensive DIY project in six days. So on the seventh day, he took a well-deserved day off. He blessed that day because it was such a special day. It might have been his first day off ever. I don't know. I don't know his life. Now at this point, it seems like the author realized that they kind of rushed through that first chapter. So we're going over some of the events again and some details are added. First of all, we learn that God is not just anybody. This dude is a Lord. In the first chapter, he was just called God, but now he's the Lord God. Maybe it's because he's a landowner now. You can't be a Lord if you don't own any land. Maybe that's what the whole project was about. Anyway, there's some stuff about why the plants wouldn't grow before the Lord God had made it rain. No, not like that, like actual rain. I'm just gonna call him God again, by the way, but know that he's a Lord. It's all over this chapter. Next, we learn some facts about how to create a human being. Apparently, God had made a man out of soil and then breathed air into his nose to give him life. So take note, if you ever want to create your own, that's how it's done. God planted a garden. It was in the east, in a place called Eden. East of what? I do not know. He put the man there. It was a beautiful garden, lots of different trees and fruit and everything. And in the middle, there were two specific trees, the tree that gives life and the tree that gives knowledge of good and evil. Then we get bombarded with a whole bunch of names of rivers and stuff, so bear with me. A river began in Eden and after that it split into four rivers. The Pishon, Gihon, Tigris and Euphrates. Pishon goes through the land of Havilah. And they list a bunch of fancy stuff that you can find there. Gold, onyx stone and Delian. Yeah, I didn't know what that was either. I, but I looked it up and it's some kind of gum resin from uh, some kind of tree, so... Fancy stuff. So the second river, Gihon, goes through the land of Kush. They don't tell us anything about Kush. The river Tigris flows east of Assyria. No further information about that either. And Euphrates is just a complete mystery. We don't even know where that one goes. Back to the garden. God is there with this man and he's basically trying to pitch him a job as gardener. In return, the man is allowed to eat any fruit he wants, except and pay attention because I have a feeling this is going to be important. Except from the tree that gives knowledge of good and evil. God tells the man that if he eats from this tree, he's going to die. And not tomorrow or in the distant future. No, that very day. I don't know why God would even have a tree like this. It seems kind of weird, you know. And if this is true, then he might consider renaming it to the tree that fucking kills you. Seems more important to me than the knowledge of good and evil. I mean, you can't know about good and evil when you're dead, right? Or can you? And then God is like, you know what this man needs? A helper. And that's apparently why he made all the animals. To help the man. But this doesn't add up at all. Because in the first chapter, he made all the animals before he made the humans. And now it's suddenly the other way around. Honest mistake? Or is God trying to gaslight us? Anyway, we'll go with this version of events. God brought all the animals to the man and the man was allowed to name them. But after he had made all of these animals, literally every species in the world, he concluded that none of them was actually a good helper for the man. And all the man needed help with was gardening. It's not like he was building a spaceship or something. So then God proceeds to cause the man to sleep. I don't know if he drugged him or anything, the book doesn't specify, but it was definitely more like a coma because God then proceeds to literally take out one of his ribs and stitch him back up and the man doesn't even wake up. And yes, I keep calling him the man because God has yet to give the dude a name. He named all the damn rivers before he named this guy. And you're not gonna believe what God did next. God took this rib and made a woman out of it. Boom! Turned the rip into a whole ass woman. He showed the woman to the man and the man was like, whoa, this is exactly who I was looking for. Made for my body and everything. This is amazing. And feminist, cover your ears because you're not gonna like this. He also said that he would name her woman because God had made her out of a man. It's kind of like opposite world when you think about it. Normally women are the ones making new people, but the creation of the first woman was made by a man and the Lord. The chapter also says that men and women become one flesh after they get married because they came from the same body. 
And the woman and the man are both naked, but they don't give a shit. This is a nudist garden. YOLO!